like that. You know, in this past week, I was having lunch with the past of um, Lake Arlington Baptist Church. And we got to talking about different denominations and different religions and how in a city we, we can work together on some things because we are citizens of the same city. And, and we all want our city to be as nice a city as possible for all of us to have the highest quality of life that we can all have. And, and as we, dis we talked about it, and he said, you know, but Kennedy, we got to make sure that we own this page with the one true God, that, that we serve the one true God. And I said, Eric, I'm, I'm with you 100% on that, that we serve the one true God. But see, when you, when you, when you just frame it like that, that, that we serve the one true God, then you, you almost imply that there's other gods. And, and, and then you got to take and take and compare these other gods with our God and, and, and justify why he's the true God and they ain't. You know, it's like, well, this is the woman I truly love. Now, sister, y'all can already see the problem with that argument. That's like talking about the one true God. But see, I believe also that he ain't just the one true God, but he's also the living God. That's the difference. See, when you, when you, when you put it that way, all the rest of them got to fall away <laughs> because he's the living God. See, when he's the true God, and that's, and that's as far as you go, then you can do all kind of crazy stuff and almost convince yourself that some kind of way you're getting away with it. But when he's the living God, that means that he can see when we got criminal behavior in the White House. When he's the living God, he can see mothers and children being, wrapped, being ripped away from their mother's arm down on the border. When he's the living God, he can see the stranger and the immigrant being mistreated within our land. When he's the living God, he can hear their cry just like ours. When he's the living God. And so, when we look at this text, we see the context of not just the true God, but we feel the presence of the living God. This psalm is personal, and it's positional. It's personal. The, the psalm, this psalm in the, in the closing hours, of the book of Psalms. It speaks to God's power as well as his presence. God's person as well as his privilege. His right to involve himself in our lowly existence. One writer said he sits high but he looks low. He's all-knowing. He's omni omniscience, and that makes him wonderful. 
He's everywhere. That means he's omnipresent. That makes him wonderful. And he's omnipotent, which means he's all powerful. And he is. God's got power. And I'm talking about all power, creative power, liberating power, justifying power, redeeming power, saving power, resurrection power, sanctifying power, glorifying power. There ain't nothing that been made that his hand didn't make it. And there ain't been a 